Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is The Seed. Beloved family, our text says, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. Luke 8, 11 to 50. King Jesus explains the parable to his disciples who did not fully understand what it meant and knew that the people also didn't understand. Our seed this morning is about the seed as described by King Jesus in the scriptures. The seed is the word of God. I'm sorry to shock some of you, but too many times all we hear is that we must sow the seed. And the only seed that we are expected to sow is money. The devil is a liar. He is so cunning. Only he would promote what God said not to serve. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one or love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Luke 16, 13. I know some of you don't like me now, but that is the truth and word of God. I am not saying that you must not give, not at all. Giving is necessary in the kingdom of God, but do not only prescribe to the doctrine, sow a seed in order to get a blessing from God or in order to get an increase and use this verse to justify it. No, King Jesus is teaching about sowing the seed, or in other words, the word of God, and yet, in other words, himself. He says, when you sow me, proclaim and teach me on good soil, on the hearts of people that receive me, you will reap a harvest and many will come to God. Help me, Father. But don't miss this. When the word is sown among thorns, those who hear the word and go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not mature with patience. Okay, let's press pause for a moment. For my Bible scholars, Sila, pause and reflect on the truth of the word we just read. King Jesus just said, the thorns of the world choke the word of God to strangle it out of our lives. Hmm, I have to clear my throat. And the thorns are lives, cares, riches, and pleasures. In other words, life's concerns, worry, money, and pleasing oneself. Now I can understand that the cares and worrying can be thorns that choke the word and cause us to be doubtful. But money and riches? Did I read that right? Those are thorns to our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God. Well, Matthew puts it this way and says the deceitfulness of riches. What would you do to obtain money? Would you lie, cheat, steal, or even kill for it? Would you covet your neighbor or others who has the riches? Desire and envy what they have? Would you deny Christ for it? Forsake your family or true friends for it? For it is the spirit of mammon, the desire and love for money that is the root of all evil. Okay, some of us still don't believe that seeking riches first could be a thorn. I say I need to give you what the word says. Paul, help us out here. Okay, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted 
after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. 1 Timothy 6.10 Father, I just love your word. Some coveted after money by seeking it first, desiring what others have and not being grateful for what they have and allowing God to meet our needs, instead trying to rely on others to meet their needs. And as a result, have erred from the faith in God which says seek first the kingdom of god not seek first money which says love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul not love money with all your heart and mind this caused us to lose our faith and it pierced those with many sorrows pierced that sounds like a thorn to me see when we don't love or covet money and seek others for it or spend all of our time and efforts chasing it, we won't be pierced with sorrows. King Solomon is qualified to advise us about this. He says, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Proverbs 10, 22. See la, pause on the word of God. God is the one who makes rich and that is much more than money and wealth. That is wisdom, knowledge and understanding. And that is faith. I like the passion text. My wise correction is more valuable than silver or gold. The finest gold is nothing compared to the revelation knowledge I can impart. Wisdom is so priceless that it exceeds the value of any jewel. Nothing you could wish for can equal her. Proverbs 8, 10 to 11. King Solomon figured out what the seed was. It was the word of God. It is the spirit and word of wisdom. He understood the best defense that I can acquire against anything is wisdom. Nothing can shelter or protect me like the wisdom of God. Ecclesiastes 7.12 says, Wisdom is a shelter or defense, as money is a shelter or defense. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves the life of those who have it, but money does not. God promised the Satan that the seed of the woman would crush his head. Genesis 3.50 So the Satan began trying to kill the seed of the woman. And he is still trying to destroy the seeds of women today. Using the love of riches and the love of money as his primary tool. Yes, God gives seed to the sower. And yes, you can sow many spiritual and material seeds in the life of other people. But be more concerned about sowing the seed, who is Jesus Christ, Lord Yeshua, the living word of God. Much love.